We begin with even more twist in the investigation into the bag of cocaine found inside the White House, one of the most high profile buildings in the world. Story keeps changing. First, it got leaked that the cocaine was in the library that's in the residence. Then the White House suggested it was found in a heavily traveled area in the West Wing where many visitors come through. But now this third change, Fox is told that it was found in a cubby by the West executive entrance, not far from the Situation Room, where the nation's most sensitive secrets are tracked every hour of every day. That's hardly an area where the average Joe walks by. The Secret Service is reviewing all cameras and access logs of staff and regular visitors, and they are expected to conclude their investigation early next week. President Biden, as he's done all this week, is again refusing to answer any questions on the matter. Not a word. Now House Oversight Chairman James Comer is demanding more details about the cocaine found. He wants a briefing with the Secret Service and fired off this scathing letter reading, quote, the president of the presence, I should say, of illegal drugs in the White House is unacceptable and a shameful moment in the White House's history. Congress funds White House security procedures and the Secret Service has a responsibility to maintain effective safety protocol. OK, Julie, so we have the case of the walking cocaine baggie. First, the library. Well put. I yes. like that. First, the library, not in the residence, but under the residence. Then we're told West Executive Lobby cubbies. And then we're told actually in a secure area near the Situation Room. Why can't they get the story straight? You know what's most disturbing about this is that Corrine Jean-Pierre lied to the American people yesterday because there is no way in hell that she did not know the actual whereabouts of a cocaine baggie in the White House. So when she came out and described it as being in the West Wing, where it's highly trafficked by visitors, and then, of course, the only answer she would answer was that the Biden family was not home that weekend. They were not in the White House. They were in Camp David for the second weekend in a row. And that... It happened sometime between Friday and Sunday where many people in and out, visitors were in and out of the White House. So she was dodging. That's called defensive answering. And I know a liar when I see one because my kids lie to me every day and I catch them. <laughs> and when you ask them a question and they defer, yes. they're lying to you. She lied to us and I felt like she was lying and today now we know she's lying. So if she's lying about this, what else are they lying about? They are lying and the truth is going to come out. Yeah, so let's take a look. There's some Corrine Jean-Pierre dodges. We put together a montage. Take a listen. So what's preventing a visitor from bringing in anthrax or something that's not magnetic into the White House? No, look, Weja, I totally understand the question, but it is under investigation. Does the White House support the prosecution of this individual? I'm just not going to get into hypotheticals from here. Would the president be satisfied with, sir, this is a busy room and... We found some cocaine. Uh, we don't know who brought it. So let's see what the Secret Service says, right? How determined is the president to get to the bottom of who brought illegal drugs into the White House? The president thinks it is incredibly important to get to the bottom of this. Emily, we are one hour and 56 minutes away from a White House press briefing. Kareem Jean-Pierre better be in her office on the phone with Secret Service. Better yet, go march down to their office, which is right there in your building, and get some answers, because that is totally unacceptable. Get your story straight. Well, that would be if there was a standard of excellence that actually was implemented in the White House. We haven't seen one thus far, so I'm not holding my breath for that, Kaylee, unfortunately. I will say the only thing that is making a larger mockery of this, other than simply the presence of an illicit substance in the White House, is how Corrine Jean-Pierre is handling this, and what is dangerously treading close is law enforcement. The way to wrap up this situation is for law enforcement, for the Secret Service, which Congress funds through our tax dollars to come out and say, this is who it is, this is exactly what the amount was, this is how it got in, and this is the accountability we are now going to have this person be held to. The standard, again, of decorum, of excellence, that has been obliterated by the person who brought it in thinking it was okay, thinking they would get away with it. The standard of evasion and deception that Corrine Jean-Pierre has now held to, why don't they understand the concept of saying, 
An illicit substance was found in the White House. We consider that patently unacceptable. We assure you, American people, we will get to the bottom of it. We will tell you exactly all the details. Stay tuned. At least reassure us for one moment that someone is at the helm that is actually an adult whose tax dollars we are not wasting on a daily basis on their salary. This is so disappointing, but unfortunately, unsurprising. It is. And David, I want to put up a map of the West Wing basement area um, and just describe some information that I got from former officials that I used to work with. So number one, you can see this smaller area. This is the West Wing uh, area where you come off West Executive and they have those cubs you mentioned. Now there's double doors and then there's cubbies and another set of double doors and then inside there's a secret service officer who's sitting there. Between these double doors are cubbies. They're like male lock boxes. You can lock them. Mm -hmm. This is where tourists go through. Um, my White House staffers, the younger kids, I said, do you ever put your cell phones in there? They said, no, we didn't. So tourists mainly use those cubbies. Now we're told that's not the area. Mm -hmm. Situation room, that is only staff. That is where your staff, you put down your phone right before you walk in. That would narrow it down to staff. And interestingly, I know there's a lot of confusion about cameras. I talked to a very trusted source, former government official, who said there are no cameras inside of the West Wing. They can review footage outside. Unless that's changed under Biden, nothing to review from within. Well, let's keep a bigger picture here, which is someone in the West Wing has a cocaine problem, and we have to hope they get the therapy that they need to deal with this. Let's start there. Secondly, this is so typical of Joe Biden is to say absolutely nothing and not take responsibility, which is what Emily talked about. Whether it's Afghanistan, whether it's uh, the rise in inflation, whether it be lying to college kids about whether they have to pay back their student loans, it is this administration that continuously refuses to take responsibility when there's an issue. And that's why you have a record number of Americans whose top concern is their faith in government. Yeah, there, yeah. there are. Um, and talk about faith. Okay, so KJP answers pretty bad, Lisa. Um, and then it was topped by her mid-level staffer, her deputy. This is the worst answer I have ever seen given by a press official. Let's watch. Former President Trump has made some pretty wild posts uh, recently on social media. Uh, one of them was that uh, the cocaine found in the White House was had belonged to either the president or his son. Are you willing to say that that's not the case, that they don't belong to them? I, I don't have uh, a response to that because we have to be careful about the Hatch Act. Uh, what I will say is that I have noticed there does seem to be some increasing frustration coming from that corner in general. Uh, and I think it is probably rooted in the contrast between their substantive policy records. Okay, asked if the first <laughs> son left cocaine, and your answer is, I can't give an answer because it would affect an election? I mean, that makes no sense. It, it makes no sense, but nothing ever has to make sense with this administration. Look, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't care that cocaine was found at the White House. What I do care about is the fact that they're lying to us, and they're going to get away with lying to us because they can. Yep. You know, the media is supposed to be the fourth estate. They're supposed to be the watchdogs, but they're lapdogs when Democrats are in charge. There's no desire to get to the bottom of this story. The networks aren't even covering it. You've got Politico already running interference saying, oh, we're, we're probably not going to be able to find out who, who brought the cocaine in, right? And that's the part that frustrates me. I mean, Media Research Center had a survey recently finding that fewer than 50% of MSNBC and CNN viewers are aware of anything negative re regarding or relating to Biden, right? The, the negative news Camelot. stories. Camelot. Because they're not covering it. And, and that's what frustrates me because you can't have a society that functions. You can't have a functioning White House if there's no accountability. And then you add on the top that this is a guy who has no ethics and morals to begin with. That puts us in a really bad place as a country. Yes. Well, you have to care. You said you don't care, but don't you care that someone thought it was okay, that this White House is being now sort of trashed and the, the sanctity obliterated under Biden's watch. Like, doesn't that symbolize to you a lack of... of well, I, I care about the lack of accountability mm -hmm. and, to your point, the, the arrogance and the belief that we can just do whatever we want because we know we're going to get away with it. You know, Hunter Biden can evade taxes. Yeah. He can, you know, break a federal gun charge, get away with it. Joe Biden can cash in on being vice president of the United States, mm -hmm. selling us out as an American people. God knows what he's given away for money, right? That is what frustrates me is the fact that this man thinks he can do whatever he wants, but he can. And that's actually even more infuriating. Yeah. And then they laugh in our face by citing the Hatch 
Act. This is the same White House that says MAGA every other word. They were already popped with a violation for that one. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.